curious, are you guys supposed to be here today? Yeah! Well, you know who wasn't supposed to be here today? Yeah. Mr. Brian O'Halloran, Jeff Anderson, and Trevor <laughs> Farnham! Vibes for me right now. <laughs> Just so you know, this was the moment he caught COVID. That's so, right. so if we have to do any tracing, it was that. It's right there. It's what happens when you use other. Big round of applause minutes. to the lady losing her lung up here. Hey. <laughs> yeah, she is. I was like, either they're happy to see us or there's a sexual assault going on. <laughs> and no one is paying attention whatsoever. Not at all. Not at all. Jits, how are we doing today? Good to see you as always, Victor. Victor Dangerton, we're the hardest working man in comics. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. We go way back. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. In fact, uh, karaoke champion over here. You know yes. there's a karaoke thing tonight. I hope to see you. Is it really? Yes, there is. Someone's finally decided to do that with this Five one. Roses yeah. Pub across the street. So Five Roses? Five yeah. Roses. All right. Yes. So It'll be there. Exactly. I'll be there. Jeff, you gonna sing with us? Oh, yes. Okay. All right. We're gonna do some Slipknot. Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna use that mask though. That's what I'm talking about. That's amazing. Um, guys, obviously we're here to celebrate you and the, the cult icons that you absolutely are. A part of this little film that you guys might have heard of called Clerks that has blossomed into an entire film. That's right. Listen, the MCU is cool, Star Wars is awesome, but the viewers universe is everything. We love it. Thank you. Thank you. Everything for people 18 and over. No, 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 I've showed my daughter, okay? This, yeah. Speaking yeah. of which, what was that CPS call we got about that? <clears throat> we said we weren't going to talk about that. Yeah. We said we, said we weren't. Right. That's okay. old news, and uh, that's that. But, um, but no, we, we obviously are super excited to know that this franchise is continuing, and I think we, we've got something. Do we have something? We do. Uh, we have a little taste of what's to come in the future. I'm going to give you a taste of the future, people. Yes. <laughs> So we're going to be releasing a Clerks 3. That's right. Nobody asked for it, but we made it anyway. Uh, so uh, how would you like to just, if we, is there a way to dim the spots dim the down a little? Is there engineer guy back there? If not, maybe, that's cool. Maybe. What is the screen? Screen? Oh, screen? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're going to show you a, a little uh, trailer for Clerks 3. You good with that? Yeah. Yeah. Big uh, screen, guys. Big screen. Mr. A.V., watch it. Clerks 3 trailer, here it comes. And that's the panel, ladies and gentlemen. No. Um, Just one big fucking information. That's <laughs> no, that's, that's absolutely phenomenal. And okay, so steer me clear from, from on the, wrong on this one. But it seems like this particular story is a little bit more about Randall as the lead than Dante, who we've been following so, so long. Is that accurate? Is that. Yes, this could be the end of it. <laughs> Not Don't let him. Randall carry a movie. No, come on, come on. We, we've been dying for this. We love the voice of everyone, and so for you to get your turn to shine is pretty amazing, I think, right? Trevor, you're being real quiet over there. I just, this is all a smokescreen. The movie's more, mostly about me. Okay, we do it, we do it, we do it, we do it. The trailer's a misdirect. <laughs> That's genius, actually. Uh, okay, so when it comes to this franchise as a whole, Music has been such a huge part of it, as we just heard in the trailer. What's some of your favorite songs that have appeared throughout the series? Oh, there's a, I mean, a bunch from the, the first, I mean, the bar was set so high with the soundtrack to the very first film. Um, you know, people like Soul Asylum, yes. you know, Jesus Lizard, you know, and a whole bunch of other great bands. Uh, same thing with the second one, where we got, you know, Smashing Pumpkins yes. had a great song in it. We got the Jackson 5 to, to, to Jackson's right. We got a whole bunch of really great songs, and this is not that far off of that feel. Although we we keep it more in the '90s, son. Yes. <laughs> um, plus, Kevin reached out to actual unknown bands oh, to, to to submit songs, mm -hmm. and I know I think he picked like two or three of bands that maybe local communities know where they're from, but the nation doesn't know, and, and they got onto the soundtrack as well. So I look forward. I don't. I haven't seen the film with right. the full soundtrack added to it. I've seen like a second cut of the film that had like placeholder songs, okay. songs that we could never afford in a million years. <laughs> it's funny how much music to license music for films is. Serious. Um, and that was part of also reaching out to like, let's get some people their due of instead of paying these people who've been living off, you know, 
money forever of their songs. Rightfully so. Respectfully. Respectfully. Uh, but yeah. We're Broke is a Joke kind of film company, so we were like, what if we just hung things on harmonicas? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I look forward to seeing what the actual soundtrack to this is. And some of the songs I know, I know Kevin in the very beginning when we were trying to tease people about this, uh, dropped a couple of songs that mm -hmm. we were going to do. And so uh, when you see it, you'll know it and you'll love it. And I think uh, alone, the, the, I don't know if kids still collect the CDs anymore. I know vinyl is big. You got, got some CDs? Um, <laughs> and there are vinyl people out there too. Oh yeah. Vinyl, yeah. yeah. Waiting for the resurgence of reel to reel. And by vinyl, do you mean like turntable vinyls or like the Gimp in uh, Pulp Fiction oh, okay. vinyls? Stop your hotel room <laughs> fanatic stuff here. It's no, you're asking for a friend. <laughs> I, I think after uh, after the first Clerks came out, uh, I was a fan of the Stabbing Westward song. Nice. And uh, they were at a local radio station in New Jersey, and I called in just to thank those guys for doing the soundtrack. And they invited me out to a show. I, I went to see them in Asbury Park, New Jersey. It was a great show. And the next day, I woke up on their tour bus in Pennsylvania. Wow. <laughs> That was not the plan. <laughs> it was their plan, though. No, that's how you know it's a good show. I was kidnapped by stabbing westward <laughs> in, in the final game suit from Pulp Fiction. <laughs> you, you're still on the suit, man. That's, that's terrible, Trevor. Actually, Trevor, this question is going to be for you. Um, it looks from the trailer that your character, uh, Elias, has a major turnaround. He's going through some stuff, yeah. He's trying to figure some things out. I respect yeah. him. Um, is he still a Transformer fan? Uh, probably, yeah, I guess. I think deep down he's the same character, but he's clearly processing some things. I mean, after you see a donkey show, then... It changes. It changes. <laughs> yeah, it kind of changes. <laughs> spoilers, guys, spoilers, okay? By the way, if there's children in the room, what are you doing? In <laughs> Boy, I, there's a long card right now. Yeah, just fair warning to any parents of young That means Trevor has to leave. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it, not again. <laughs> As we see two parents taking their kid out right now, they're like, Sorry, oh, you sorry, hey, sorry, Chicago, not Tijuana, what are we doing? <laughs> okay, so, again, when it comes back to the franchise, though, these characters, we've grown with them, right? We, we've embraced them in so many different ways. How have they impacted you personally? Do you see more of yourself as they have gotten older that you have become more like them? Um, you know, this will follow me literally to my grave and on my tombstone that I'm asked, are you even supposed to be here today? <laughs> you know, that question. That's true, that's true. Uh, but as far as like, I mean, they, they, we're, it's ubiquitous with us. We were both, you know, Dante, Brian, it's, it's not far off in the sense like, yeah, I'm a bit of a people pleaser type of person. Although I'm a more of a sarcastic fuck like Randall, to be honest with you, in real life, in real life. But I mean, I'm pleasant to everybody and stuff like that, but you get on the wrong side, oh, shit's on now. Um, but otherwise, yeah, I, I love to see the growth, and Kevin has written it through the growth of his, his life. I mean, as you see, the character Randall has a bit of a heart scare in the movie, which is kind of based on Kevin's own heart scare. So Kevin, like they say, does what they always tell you to do, is write your own story, write what you know. And he knew that whole thing. And funny enough to give it to Randall, it was, uh, and put him through to like, wait a minute, I still haven't done nothing with my life still. Ten more years later, uh, and to make a movie was kind of Kevin, where he was like, I want to make a movie about my life. So it's very funny about life imitating art and then art back to life kind of a thing, which I enjoy. I love that. Jeff, what about you? Uh, yeah, I think over time I've become more Randall-like. <laughs> kind of hard not to. Um, I'm not a great actor, so it's kind of me. Come on, we, we love you for what you bring to the... To no, the, he's right. Don't see it. Come on! <laughs> he's just saying what we're all thinking. That's all. Oh, that's all. Right. <laughs> All right, Trevor, so what, what about you? What about you? This return I, as Elias? Yeah, I was typecast as Elias. When they, when uh, Kevin had the audition, he was like, hey, two questions. How Christian are you? How bad do you want to fuck a donkey? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, I, and, I, and I said, yes. <laughs> Often. <laughs> oh, you didn't even get that last one. You just had to watch. I'm sorry. That's my, is that a deleted scene? Not that you as sorry like? as I am. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I know, I don't, I don't really relate to Elias that much, but uh, I like him. He's a, he's a good dude. You definitely made it your own. Oh, oh thank you. That, that is very true, very true. Um, okay, so I, I happen to just be watching the uh, ABC dance, which was amazing. Um, and I'm curious, what song was playing while you all were dancing? Were you actually listening to that? Because there's a lot of different, you know, dance moves that you guys get off in that one. And I'm just curious as to how you pulled that one off 
It was uh, it's Metallica Sent of the Sandman, if I remember. Was it really? I was like, wait, that's what John Roller? <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. We played the ABC. That's awesome. That is awesome. I mean, um, Mickey Rooney's son was the choreographer, the okay. actual choreographer of all those dancers in the parking lot. And for like. They're all like, who the fuck is Mickey Rooney? <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> who the fuck is Anne Frank? <laughs> 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 Anybody missing any of those references, ask your great grandparents. <laughs> so, uh, he went, for a whole week as we were shooting Clerks 2, they were in this separate hall of this like union hall that was next to the movies and rehearsing all the time. And when lunch would break, there'd be like four tables of all these dancers. And as rude and just stupid as we are as a crew and cast, we were all like, ooh, look at all those dancers. <laughs> And like, ooh, look at that one. And, ooh, I do dance all over that one. And you know, think like, I would bust a move with this one. And so, uh, and then we saw the whole routine and we were like, holy well, shit. That's amazing. And I was like, who is the choreographer? And like, yeah. that's fucking Mickey Rooney's son. I'm like, holy shit. Really? But which one is he? Because he's, he's dancing with them. No, right? no, no, no. No? Uh, he's an older gentleman, so he was just the choreographer of it. That's he's amazing. not in it. But uh, it was just cool. That, that kind of weird old Hollywood blending yeah. to, to us. Uh, do you you'll, see, the, you'll see some of that in this one too, the third one. Do you remember The Simpsons with Mickey Rooney in it? And yeah. it's like Milhouse's yeah. fallout boy. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, you're, Milhouse, you're good. You're Gabby Hayes good. And he's like, I know I'm good. <laughs> he didn't know who Gabby Hayes was. That's really uh, uh, I do want to remind everybody, you are more than welcome to ask some questions. We've got two mics over here. Just be respectful of those people behind you. But while you guys do that, I'm going to continue this. Thought train By the way, I just want to also thank yes. thank you for putting the microphones in vision of I can see who's at the microphone. We got you. We got you. It was a, it was a small <laughs> issue back in Denver. I believe that. Just quick story about these microphones. So back in Denver, it was a the microphones were further back, and we were on like a slightly higher stage, and the lights were a little brighter than this. And so we're talking. Someone's having a question. Then we'll go over here. We're, so we someone was done. We turned to this one. They're asking their question. And I turn back, and it's a woman, because the microphone, I can't see the base of it. She's sitting in one of the chairs, and they're handing her a mic. I'm like, no, 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 honey, it's okay, you can stand up. And I hear from the audience, ooh. <laughs> it was a woman in a wheelchair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I was like, for a second, I thought Brian had healing power. <laughs> no, no, you can stand up. Holy <laughs> shit. So instead of being like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, I just fucking dug the hole even deeper. And I was like, well, why are you sitting in front with the rest of the crypts over here? <laughs> and You've I, seen the movies, people. Yeah, come on. And that's the joke. If anybody's seen two, especially, right. you know what we're making fun of. And so I just owned it, and it was great. She was awesome about it. And as a matter of fact, she came and saw us the next day and stuff with, like, her bodyguard. <laughs> You want to see how it is to be in a wheelchair? All right. <laughs> Learn but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun, so thank you for putting them in yes, places yes, we can see. Yes, indeed. Without question. Okay, so I'm going to let you guys jump right into this. Hello, friend. How are we doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Fantastic. Uh, gentlemen, I just have one question. What is your fondest memory of the viewers universe as a whole? No pressure. Mm. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I would... Uh, come, uh, come on. Making out Rosario Dawson is very hard. <laughs> Yeah, I would say watching Brian make out with the dog. <laughs> oh. I enjoyed Brian making out with Kevin's wife. Oh. <laughs> how awkward is that? I want, I want anyone here to say that you go to work one day and your boss goes, I want my wife to straddle you while you two make out and I film it, and then at the end I pay you. This was the <laughs> This, time. this is way before touch porn got popular. I just kept fucking up that scene. I kept like coughing and shit just to make him kiss a little longer. It's from that point on, Kevin never left me alone with his wife anywhere. Oh. Just, just kidding. It's good, bro. That's what happens. Well, there you go. There's our highlights for you. Thank you. Thank you. Look forward to taking the pic with you guys. Yeah. Hey. Did he say dick pic? What? Yes. <laughs> he wants to do a comparison picture. Let's go. It's great seeing you guys come back for Clerks 3, particularly Jeff and Trevor. And so I was kind Wait of... Wait a minute, what? Fuck <laughs> 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 Brian. <laughs> That's the question. Right over here. Everywhere, everywhere, so... Yeah. Fuck him. Uh, <laughs> just joking. Uh, but I'm curious, what are you guys... 
you, Jeff and Trevor, what have you guys been doing between Clerks 2 and Clerks 3? Like, I knew that you lived in a retirement community, something like that, so what were you... <laughs> I play a lot of shuffleboard. Uh, I've just been in that gimp suit, but... <laughs> Tell you the truth, that box is... Yeah, if you lose, 10 Amazon? loses all meaning. What was that? So are you selling them on Amazon or something? <laughs> no, that's a good idea, actually. He's about to join your OnlyFans, it's about to happen. Yeah, yeah buddy. Yeah, uh, no, I'm not, I haven't... I act little... A lot of people don't know that I had sort of quit acting before I did Clerks 2. And so, Kevin called me and asked me to do it because I was in the movie Now You Know that Jeff had written and directed. <laughs> That's all right. That's right. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I did that, and then I kind of made another half-hearted attempt to be in shows for a while, but it's just not for me. So I haven't been doing that. Ever. You you did develop the Jay and Silent Bob Blunt Chronic Punch game. That's yeah, right. Yeah, that's true. Because he's a computer coder, everybody. Hey. Hey. That's right. Anybody who didn't clap, I just hacked your emails. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you go. Right. Thanks, guys. You're Appreciate welcome. It. Hello, friend. Hi there. Um, I remember in Jane Silent Bob where Mark Hamill made a cameo. Oh, yeah. um, and I was wondering in Clerk 3, are you guys going to make any celebrity guest cameo like Mark Hamill did in the last one where they had a monkey in it? So, are you saying are there guest cameos in Clerk 3? Or are you asking are there monkeys in it? <laughs> no, no. Well, Jay's in it, so that covers oh, that. Oh, yeah, terrible. We, I'm just, just yeah, kidding. Because, um, yeah, I, yeah, we have a, we have some get, not as many as Jay in a Silent Bob reboot, which is just yeah, nothing but right. cameos. Right. I was like, when is Jay and Bob coming on the screen? <laughs> um, but uh, we have our we have a good a good bunch of people that you'll recognize. I mean, just that trailer you saw about five cameos alone. So, right. but it's not like I said, it's not going to be like get to the Dante Randall part already. And I hope your live stream appreciated Hi. that too. Yeah, thank, been, you, thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. It's been so long since Jeff and I have been in a movie, you could say that we're the cameos. <laughs> <laughs> hey, those guys. <laughs> Look who it is again. Hi. So when you guys were reading this script for Clerks 2, what was the initial reaction to the donkey show? Like, <laughs> was it just Kevin being Kevin, or were you like, what the hell am I reading? Trevor? I just thought it was funny. I was in a gym suit at the time. Uh, hold on, I'm gonna keep plumbing that joke. That seemed about like the yeah, last like one. Yeah, three more. <laughs> <laughs> three more before we whip you. Okay. Uh, don't promise. Uh, threaten me with a good time. So, <laughs> no, I just thought it was funny. I mean, it's funny. People ask that a lot. They, I guess they, they figure... I mean, probably a normal person would react with some degree of horror. Uh, but I didn't. I, I thought it was funny. I, I, uh, I'll tell this story real quick. Um, when my family went to go see the movie when it came out, uh, it was my, it was my, um, so my mom's from like a family of five, my dad's from like a family of six or something, so I have a bunch of aunts and uncles, a bunch of cousins, and my grandmother was there, it's like a four foot ten Polish lady, you know, like sweet glasses, and um, my brother-in-law was there, and he was sitting behind her, and it gets like, also, I would not have advised them to do this, I didn't know about this plan, but they all went to the movie theater together, and when the donkey scene came along, my brother-in-law heard my grandma go, Oh, Trevor, no. <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace, grandma. Oh, oh, that killed her. <laughs> <laughs> She's up there gently disapproving of me as we speak. <laughs> Trevor's like, Grandma, do you need mouth stuff? <laughs> That's so terrible. Did you ask her, Grandma, what was it like? <laughs> oh, man. What was the feet cut? Sorry about that. <laughs> Funny enough, uh, the story, when they were casting the Becca, the Becky part in Clerks 2, uh, the, the Weinstein company wanted certain other actresses, and they went through two, and one was like, am I being punked? Fuck no. Uh, and the other one's like, I have a career to continue. And then uh, Rosario Dawson came along, and she said yes, and we had our first read-through with just me and Jeff, and Kevin, and, and uh, uh, Jay, and uh, Scott, uh, Scott uh, Mosier, before Rosario was, was arriving like two hours later. So we had one quick read through, we got notes, things should be adjusted. Then we had a second read through with her there. And our game like hugely stepped up to A-list where Jeff 
where Kevin was looking at us like, what was that about? Like, you were shitty just a minute ago, and now you're it was like, because we have a fucking A-list act, I suppose. So at the end, we're just saying goodbye. She was going off to do Kill Shot or whatever uh, movie she was shooting at that time. And uh, we asked her, Kevin asked her, like, just by the way, what made you say yes to this? Right. And she said, can I be honest with you? I wanted to see how you're going to pull off this donkey show. <laughs> <laughs> and we were like, that's our girl. Hey. Big ups to Rosario, who also crushes it in the third one. You're gonna love her in this one as well. Can't wait. Thank you. you. Thank you, man. Thank you. Yes. Hello, friend. How are we doing? Hi. Good. How about you guys? How are you? Good. I was just wondering, how was the transition? And did you guys have any difficulties going from like traditional acting and clerks to voice acting in the Clerks cartoon show? Oh, great question. Yeah, no, I, I only act at one speed. <laughs> <laughs> so voice, camera, it's all the same. Just give me a piece of gum and I'm good to go. <laughs> there was notes when we did the animated series of like just being more like, you know, up there. Kind of like energy and range because it's animated. So uh, we did the, the animated series, the six episodes, and then ABC dropped the ball and, and F'd us in the A. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so... Uh, that is just so like ABC. Yeah. yeah. And to so, F you in the A. Right. <laughs> BC. So we went on to do a short film, me, it, me and Jeff, called The Flying Car Sketch. Yes! Yeah, thank you. Anybody saw that, it, that we made for uh, J Jay Leno. And uh, when we were doing that, I remember Kevin giving Jeff you know, some direction while we were sitting in the car and we took a take and Kevin would scream from behind the monitor, Jeff, do cartoon Randall. And immediately Jeff knew what that meant, which was like a more amplified. It means bring my hands up and do this. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, there, there was a transition like that. That's something that we would love to do. And here's the thing, if, especially if y'all go see Clerks 3 in the theaters. If. Yeah. Oh, well, look, I mean, when? I'm not gonna force you all to do things. It does kind of seem like It's not like, like the Supreme here, Court telling you to carry a baby. <laughs> oh, no! Yeah, I went there. Anyway, so, uh, cause shit, man, I paid for six. I'm not bringing, telling chicks to now go to Europe. Fuck that. <laughs> Only kidding. Which, sorry, I didn't mean to turn on you. Uh, so, so uh, once, if, if, if we do really well theatrically, especially, uh, there are producers who are ready to reconstitute the cartoon that and awesome. Mallrats 2 movie. Hey! People in the seats in the theaters. Now it's September. The weather might be cooler, especially here in Chicago. Do a, a charity a thing and bring homeless people in the theater with you. Yeah, it counts. Give, you them, have to give choose, them a place to warm for an hour and a half with some popcorn. If, if you have to choose between seeing Clerks 3 and voting, do the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> Who votes in September? Yeah, I was going to say, it's yeah, September. Like, it's, it's, it's not early voting in yeah. September. Then we are going to use Clerks 3 as the voter registration program. Right? Unless he's talking about American Idol, and then, you know. Well, that's different. That's very different. And there you go. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, brother. Hello. How's it going? It's funny. All I see is hair and horns. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's just a silhouette with that light behind him. That's usually what's going to say when I die, probably. Yeah. <laughs> so, Gene West from Comic Book Band here has a two question that's not Clerks. Okay. First, Brian, love you, mall rats. We all miss Stan Lee. Do you have anything, interaction, or anything that you did with Stan Lee during the voting or during the shooting? Uh, during the filming of Mall Rats, no. Um, a, hit, a lot of his stuff happened while I wasn't up there in Minnesota yet. Uh, one of my greatest highlights of my career was I hosted at a con, they had a separate gigantic event, which was the comedy roast of Stan Lee. I was there. Oh, wow. And, uh, and I was the MC of the whole event. Oh, wow. I, I was the Roastmaster General at that time. Uh, and uh, to this day, I'm still waiting to see them release that, that whole hour, two hours. Oh, my goodness. And it was incredible. We had, like, Michael Rooker, Ming-Na Wen, we had Ming Chen there, we had Marilyn Gigliotti at Clerks. Uh, Maurice LaMarche and Paul, uh, uh, Rob Paulson and a whole bunch of people were on the dais and we just, it was awesome. We, we ripped into him, he busted our balls. It was, it was a lot of fun. I don't know who has the rights to it still, but eventually that'll get released. Oh, yeah, it, yeah it, one of the biggest uh, compliments to me was Peter Mayhew was there at the time and he was in his wheelchair at that yeah. time. And his son said that, you know, they had him up at the front of the table and his son said to me the next day, he's like, my father usually comes to these things and stays for like 20 minutes and then he feels kind of tired and leaves. 
uh, you guys were so funny. He stayed the entire two hours. And I was like, all right, Chewbacca, fucking A. So hopefully whenever that can be released, uh, that would be awesome. So that was my love. I mean, I remember joking about, so Stan, the, your catchphrase, Excelsior, l l let's be honest. You say that when you're having coitus with your wife, don't you? <laughs> that, that's your finisher, is it? So he got his wife, who was alive at the time, on the phone to say, They're asking me in our heat of passion. Yes. <laughs> Do I say Excelsior? And so he, and I was like, holy shit, Stanley is repeating my joke to his wife. Yeah. <laughs> like, he literally called her on stage. It was yeah. amazing. It was pretty fun. And Jeff, on Zack and Mary, how many takes did you get frosted? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what was it? Because I'm really hoping it wasn't. Not authenticity, man. Um, I was in my hotel room early one morning and the phone rang and I answered the phone and this guy identified himself as the shit maker. <laughs> like, fucking Trevor, stop calling my room. <laughs> no, um, he was asking me if I had food allergies. Uh, I think the final mix turned out to be cake batter, pudding, and just before we shot, Kevin threw a can of corn in. Oh. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it, it's like, as we were going, you know, when, when you read the script, it was a shit gun, and then it was a shit blah blah blah, and at the end, it was a shit cannon. Oh. So, and, uh, it was a big PVC pipe hooked up to, like, this big compressor. read the script, it was a shit gun, and then it was a shit blah blah blah, and at the end, it was a shit cannon. Oh my god. So, and, uh, it was a big PVC pipe hooked up to like this big compressor and Kevin just before we shot he said you know you don't know this is coming so don't blink your eyes I got a fuck <laughs> like I'm under Kevin I'm under Jay's balls how do I not blink my eyes um, but yeah we did it in one take it was awesome. uh, we counted one two bam so three wasn't there awesome. uh, the actual okay. worst part of it was like afterward where I run outside and I talk to Craig yeah uh, it was only eight degrees oh. and, uh, like, freezing to my face and my hair uh, so that was the hardest part It's amazing. Oh god. It's it's a it's a, it's a never it, a sure bet every time we do Q and A's. A donkey show questions yes. and, and the cake, you know, the frosting of him in Zach and Mary. It's never ending. And uh, now apparently the gimp costume is a new one. My plan is coming to First fruition. off, thanks guys for all the laughs over the years. Now you? Second, I have not so much a question but a request. Jeff, can we get a randle? Oh, oh yeah. Woo. Dude, uh, you guys go ahead with the show. I'm gonna limber up for a little bit. Uh -oh. <laughs> I'm old now, man. I got it. All right, here we go. Oh, oh. All right, here we go. Here we go. Usually, he in the beginning of the whole uh, Q and A, he walks on stage that way just uh, to get it out of the way. Yeah. He didn't this time. Here we go. Here we go. Everybody, stomp your feet like it's a uh, drum roll, please. There we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not weird. Come on. There you go, everybody. You got two seconds. Chicago. In Denver, for some reason last week, and he was more limber. I don't know what's in the air up there. Uh, but, uh, none, uh, actually. Uh, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, it's quite, quite brisk. Hello. Well, th thanks for coming over to Chicago for this. Right on. And uh, just to let everybody know, it's a Lionsgate feature, so you can't stream it. <laughs> got to go to the theater. Fair game. Fair game. There you go. No. And. I was just curious, um, now you know, uh, is this kind of meta, the fact that Randall's making a movie when you've already made a movie yourself? <laughs> meta? <laughs> uh, again, thanks, my brother, <laughs> for bringing up Now You Know. Um, yeah, no, it's, it's meta. <laughs> You gotta take that. That's the most Randall answer ever. Well, it was very easy for the Randall yeah. character to know the terminology, let's put it that way. He was right. doing about framing shots and stuff like that. So he walked right into that one. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Hello? Hi. Hi. I was just wondering, like, how do you keep convincing Ben Affleck to do cameo after cameo? <laughs> well, one time we had to bury this hooker in Vegas. I was gonna say. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It was more than one. I'm just trying to keep it so he doesn't call us again. That's right. <laughs> he wasn't with the hooker today. Uh, you know what it was? Um, and Kevin talked about this when he was touring with Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, that there was a, a bit of a kind of, certain people were interfering with the relationship that was Ben and Kevin. 
where someone's like, he's a bad influence on you. And he's like, but he's my friend. And then that person moved on. And so uh, he was able to rekindle that kind of connection for Reboot. And if anybody has never seen Jane Silent Bob Reboot, there's this m huge section towards the end of the movie with Ben Affleck that's just such a hard pull on the heart string. A heart string. So um, after that, the, the relationship was back. And so, uh, you know, he, he gave us a, threw us a bone again for this one. There's a story from Clerks too that uh, Kevin has told many times, so that, I apologize if you've heard this already, but he asked, I guess he asked Ben to do the cameo in Clerks too. Ben was like, sure. And uh, he was like, do you want a line? And Ben was like, no, nah, no. Nah. And he's like, all right, well, so just so you know, this is the first time in all the movies that I've done in a row that you wouldn't be saying anything. And he's like, I, I'm fine, Kevin, I don't need a line. And then sure enough, that comes the day he's shooting, it comes up to Kevin, he's like, I think I should say something in the scene. <laughs> <laughs> I just feel the spirit moving through me. And actually, considering that, you know, there's a lot of actors that kind of got a lot of their start under this umbrella of USQ, it kind of makes sense that they still, you know, kind of pay back a little bit to the, you know, where they got their start. Yeah, ben is cool, but we know him first as that guy that does the thing in the uncomfortable place. Like, I don't care how Batman he is. Like the back of a Volkswagen? Exactly. <laughs> I'm in. Thank you. So this is for Jeff, because you brought up one of my favorite bands. What is your favorite stabbing song, stabbing Westward song? Um, well, I like the one that was on the soundtrack just because it was on the soundtrack. That, that's my song. The those, violent, those guys are... Uh, violent mood swings. Yeah, uh, those guys are good guys, yeah. They're, they're interesting. <laughs> what about yours? What's your favorite? My favorite? Yeah. Um, it's either... Any, it's probably any song off the Darkest Days album. Okay. The right. one to save yourself on it. That's like their most popular hit. Yeah. But what do I have to do is my top favorite Ooh. out of all of them. That's a good cut. Yeah, I'm one of those kids who listens to bands that one hit wonders. There's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. Your culture. That's all. That's what it is. All right, thank you. Thank you. Hello. Hello there. What's up? Hi. Uh, so, question is for you, Dante. Um, how does. How did, That's right, you are now. Exactly. How did it feel at the time to find out that you were number 37? Sticky. <laughs> well, guy at the microphone asking questions. Uh, I thought it was kind of interesting that that was the number. Uh, that it was just like, wow, that's that's a lot. And uh, I've never been with a whore before, but uh, <laughs> I thought it was just very, very funny. I, I feel bad for Marilyn Gigliotti, the actress who plays Veronica. Because as we do these cons and people are like, hey, I'm not supposed to be here today, or 37 in a row. I mean, that poor girl gets, hey, try not to suck any dick on the way to the parking lot. <laughs> and if you're not a fan or know nothing about the viewers universe and you overhear someone screaming at a woman, that, you're like, Did you, you need to go apologize to that woman. Oh my God, my children. You know, so the I- The other kinda, half of the parking lot follows. <laughs> So I don't get it so bad about that whole thing, right? Hey, you, you, get back here. Uh, but it's the kind of thing where there's so many great memorable lines from all of Kevin movies. That, I mean, he's really, really great with dialogue. That's his strong point, I think. And so uh, I, I enjoy it. And the, and the fact that it was 37 and that whole conversation. But there were things like when I first read that very first script, like that snowballing. I had no, other, I had no idea what snowballing was. And now you do. And then when he explained it to me, I'm like, that's a thing? Like. <laughs> So when I said it in the movie, that's a thing? Like, it was like, that was really Brian going, ugh, that's a thing? <laughs> so, uh, you wait until you hear what gets said in the next movie. Yeah. 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 So you'll, you'll, you'll be screaming other different things at us by the end of this one, so. <laughs> well, I did want to know, she said she was going to put it to shame for the rest of New Jersey. Mm. Where do you think she would be at? Oh, time? you'll find out. Oh! Oh! September. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Yeah. She's Love like that. a... I think uh, a heavy investor in Valtrex. <laughs> Jesus Christ. For those who are laughing, ew. <laughs> you have to laugh to keep from crying. That's what that is. I like the low key funniest part of that scene to me is when she starts counting on her fingers because it implies that she's got this photographic memory for dick sucking. She can see them all. Like, no one could actually do that. It's kind of like, it's really impressive. Uh, you remember each one, man. Come on. <laughs> That's too fair. Each one, each 20. Here we go, what's the next one? Hey there, I'm Nick. I just wanted to, first of all, thank you guys for all the laughs over the years. Just You're welcome. Just honesty in it. Um, but I did have a question for you. Um, did Vulgar haunt you as much as an actor as it did everybody that watched it? <laughs> uh, thank you. First of all, thank you for the respect. Uh, I did a movie called Vulgar, written and directed, co-stars Brian Johnson, who's, uh, yeah. Woo! 
Fell on Steve Dave, if you've listened to that podcast, he's one of the kings of that. Um, he's the real inspiration of the real life Randall, who grew up with Kevin, worked at the video store and convenience store. He wrote this film. If you ever watch the original Clerks, there's that animated beginning where there's a clown that comes in and then goes behind a dressing yeah. screen and, and then gets into a fish knot, you know, a, a halt, a garter and stuff. Sexy. So one day Kevin and Brian are sitting in the office going, you know, and Brian just turns because Kevin made that the logo of his company in the beginning and said, what do you think this guy's story is? And Kevin's like, I don't know, why don't you write something about it? And he did, so he wrote this script called Vulgar. It's a really dark, twisted script about a young man who's a party clown for kids that you hire for birthday parties and stuff like that, who's not making enough money and decides to be a party clown for adults and his first gig goes horribly wrong. Uh, and the horribly wrong part is what he, the, he's inferring, did it haunt me? Uh, in the, the research of it and doing it was kind of very dark. I had to put myself in a very dark place for it. Uh, and then afterwards, you know, you get it and you see it. And we first screened it at the Toronto Film Festival where it's a theater full of like 500 people. And then once certain scenes happen, you just see like 200 people get up and start walking <laughs> out. And I'm like, oh no. And then when we got picked up by, funny enough, Lionsgate, uh, and then it got distribution. We went on the Howard Stern show when it was still free, when he wasn't on Serious. He's like, guys, I gotta tell you, watch the movie, but not the whole thing. I had to stop halfway through, not because it wasn't a good movie, but it was too disturbing for me to finish. And that was the best press we ever yeah. got. It's like, a good movie, not even Howard Stern could finish. Uh, so it was awesome. I'm sorry, could we hear a little more about your research? Yeah. <laughs> it was, it was a bit of a sad research on it. I do have copies of the unrated version for sale yes. at my table. By all means, come back to the table and you'll, you too could have a wonderful movie to show the kids after Thanksgiving. Ooh. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. kidding. But yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate that. Awesome. Hello. Uh, first off, I just watched Clerks last night to refresh my uh, brain. Right uh, two, one, two really quick things. One, have you any of you actually seen Navy Seals? And uh, for Randall, at the when you were reciting the other videos besides Happy Scrappy Hero Pup, was that in the script, or did you add with that? Uh, it was in the script. Um, uh, there were uh, a few titles, and they were actually written down. Kevin wrote them. Thank God I didn't have to memorize them. I thought it would hurt my brain. Um, but yeah, I, I knew like. I didn't think anybody would ever see the movie, but I knew at some point my mother would probably have to watch it. So I was like, oh, you know, no. it's, it seems like there's a lot of titles here. Can we like cut some down? And he was like, yeah, yeah, give me the list. And uh, you know, when we were filming Clerks, we didn't have enough film to do multiple takes. So it's literally as we're getting ready to go, he's like, all right, action, hands me back the list. And he had added like five titles to it. <laughs> So, like, you're just on camera, I'm like, all right, I gotta just keep reading here. <laughs> and did you guys see Navy Seals? Actually watch Navy Seals. Oh, I follow anything Charlie Sheen does. It's real. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Real. Yeah, like, if anybody has seen the uh, movie, what is it, The Arrival? Whatever yeah, it looks yeah, like, yeah, science fiction one. Broken leg thing? Uh, yeah. He totally stole my goatee, come on. You that is facts! Oh my again. god, that's uh, so true. We only have five minutes left, so yeah. we gotta do rapid fire questioning from this point on. Here we go. So, shoot. Yeah, thanks again for being here. Just thanks for having me. a goofy question for Jeff. Are you nervous at all being so close to the Hobbits after your rendition of the Lord of the Rings? The first show that we did with where the Hobbits were, um, Trevor didn't come to that show, uh, and it was just Brian and I were like, holy shit, the fucking Hobbits are here. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we took a picture with them and Brian's holding up an onion ring. I'm kind of pointing at it and they were like this standing above us. <laughs> I don't get set excited about a lot of stuff, but I love that picture. <laughs> <laughs> when we finally were in a city where all three of us were there with the Hobbits, we then reenacted it where, where Trevor was holding an onion ring. They actually found him an onion ring to hold. And then uh, me and Jeff are like, whatever, and all the hobbits, because they take their photo with the plexiglass, they're all up against it like the fucking Phantom Zone. <laughs> so we, we have that picture as well. They're really great sports about it. I mean, I've known Sean uh, for a while, so talking to him to, to direct us was, was great. So uh, they're always a bunch of fun. It was, it was going to turn into like a West Side Story where... <laughs> The Hobbits. I think we could take them. Yeah. yeah, you can. And obviously, Maria's played by Trevor. Ooh! Because <laughs> no. he loves one of the Hobbits. Yeah. But there you go. Thank you for the Thank question. You. Hello. Hi, two really quick questions. Sure, guys. Being as actors, first of all, I wanted to say thanks to you and Jeff 
after the signature, we didn't even know about this. So right. thank you. You're welcome. Um, but uh, as actors, I always wanted to know, is it difficult uh, doing a role with any animals? Do you have trouble? Like, like uh, dog the donkey we were just watching. <laughs> They, actually, they call me the donkey whisperer. Yeah. <laughs> um, when I did Jane Silent Bob Strike Back and Dante strapped to that vivisection table with real chimpanzees, that was scariest. That's the scariest I've ever been in my life wow. while acting because uh, the chimps go, when they when they don't like something, they attack it and they'll chew like they'll chew your face off, they'll chew your fingers off. And this literally was like weeks after that poor woman in Connecticut yeah. had her pet chimp eat her entire face off. Um, so we would, I was strapped to a table, the chimp was getting a little ornery and the, the, the wrangler was like, can we take a few minutes and like, what's going on? Like, they don't like that, that goo that's on his head because it's a special effect that kind of trails after you, like webbing and chimps don't like shit like that. So they wiped it off. And then the special effects guy, oh, now it looks fake. It look, now it really looks like a fake piece of plastic on his head. And so I was like, I'm still strapped to the table. I was like, is there any honey at the craft table? <laughs> And the craft guy's like, yeah, we got honey. I was like, will that work? And they're like, oh yeah, they love honey, actually. So they grabbed that bear and <laughs> all over my head. And it's like, oh, the orange color actually makes it look like more bloody. And so then we, you know, because I told the, the makeup guy, I said, look, if shit goes wrong, just jump your body on my head. I'll turtle my fingers in, that's fine. <laughs> so then we go, all right, here we go. Everybody good, are we good? And they put the chimps down with us and then action. And I'm sitting there like, I'm not supposed to be here today. Ah. And then literally just after that line, you're seeing the chimp move in and I'm just seeing the shadow of the chimp's head. And next thing I you know, he's like a fucking ice cream cone, he just licked the top of my head. And I was like, I'm gonna die by being eaten by a chip. And the second question, uh, really quick, is uh, is this the end of Clerks? Like, what are. I know you talked about other. I know. I know. Right. You talked about other projects. What are those? Uh, I mentioned earlier that if we do that, they, if we do the Clerks cartoon, that would be a great way to continue on with these guys. Because, let's be honest, there's going to be a point where physically we're just like, oh God, no, <laughs> no that's no. already happened. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> where there's not enough CGI in the world like fucking Joe Pesci and, and De Niro that are going to save us. We're not going to make the Irishman, uh, so we don't have that type of budget. So, but the cartoon is something where vocally we're still young enough to do it, so to speak. We can remember things for now. Great, thank you. Thank you. Hello. There we Clerks go. 47 in a row? 30. Seriously, thank you for being here today. Um, so I know Kevin keeps bringing you guys scripts all the time. What is the one you got from him that you went, I don't know if I can do this? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, there's nothing that, I, I've even said this to Kevin directly, I was like, listen man, you call me anytime, what, we're doing something on a subway in Manhattan, alright, I'll be there, kind of thing. I think uh, there was a draft of Clerks 3 right. that was before the actual one we shot, that one felt a little weird to me, uh, it didn't feel like it quite fit in the uh, Clerks world, yeah. uh, so that one didn't get made, um, and, and I think Kevin is happy that it didn't get made. Uh, but that one was a little odd. Yeah, we did a, two staged readings of that version, Jeff wasn't around at the time, uh, for a fundraiser for the First Avenue Playhouse Theater, which is the theater we all auditioned in for the very first film, which actually we film again in for Clerks 3, funny awesome. enough. Uh, so we did a fundraiser where we read that script, and it was a, dar a much darker script. Uh, and it was just did, like Jeff said, it just didn't feel right to be part of the, the Clerks universe. I always liked that one personally. But yeah, so my op my my answer is the opposite of Jeff's. The op everything I've read of him, I'm like sure, that was good. It's good. <laughs> nice. Thank, Thank you. you. Last one. I got the um, last one here. Um, I was going to ask you guys. I know it's kind of unconventional. I know what uh, Dante. You're in Mallrats also. Right. As, as Gil gets yeah. Gil. Yeah. Right. yeah. You did the uh, scene with that one and James on and all the rest. Of it. Right. But um, for that one, I know it's kind of unconventional. Are you still friends with Matt Damon and some of the other celebrities? Just to ask? Uh, well, Joey Lauren Adams, I'm friends with her. I've seen her, she does some of these cons from time to time as well. So I've become friends with her. Um, anytime I've seen Ben or Matt around, they, they kind of know who I am. They're like, hey man, how's it going? Yeah. Um, it's not like I'm playing like, poker against them every like, weekend. Yeah, like in all those days. Um, and uh, I got a funny question for you. How come Brody's not on the team? How come Brody's not on a team? Ah, oh, that's a good that eye. That is a good one, yeah. That's a good eye, yeah. You don't know. 
We don't know. We don't. We, maybe we'll find out. We will. We'll see you in September. Yeah. yeah. There it is. That's how you do it. Thank you for coming.